Today's video contains big spoilers for Persona 5 Royal, so unless you've completed the game or you just don't mind spoilers, you might want to hold off on this one. With that out of the way, let's get started. Persona 5 Royal is the latest in a long history of Atlas re-released games, with a tremendous number of improvements and a massive amount of new content. So much so that it can be frustrating for early adopters to see just how much new stuff they added to the new release. And with Persona 5 Royal came a brand new story arc. And after 120 hours of my life that I will never get back, I've finally completed it. And honestly, I loved it. And I have to say, the game's new grand finale really piqued my interest. And I'm gonna be honest with you, Chief, I have no idea what the fan reaction to this new arc was like. I might be preaching to the choir, or I might be polishing my own buster sword in the middle of a riot, but I actually found this arc to be more thought-provoking than I think some might realize at a surface level. I believe the message here is self-actualization without the adversities required to actualize. This is to say, how much mileage can you really get from escapism. Something that I, at least, personally found to be a compelling message, minus some minor grievances. After defeating the God of Control, things just don't seem to be returning to normal. In this brand new arc, Dr. Maruki, who served as your school's counselor, has also manifested his own stand as well. His persona has the ability to distort the way people perceive reality. This is by far the most powerful ability that any single persona user has in the context of Persona 5. And while this easily could have been an overpowered villain type character, it's how Maruki uses his power. It's actually not for malicious purposes. In fact, he's trying to save the world, make it a better place. And to do so, he's trying to use his power in the metaverse. In that light, he's honestly not that different from the Phantom Thieves. By using this power called actualization, undoubtedly based on self-actualization from Maslow's hierarchy of needs, he's actually able to change most people's lives for the better at least on the surface level. And when he enacts his power, you actually feel this alleged improvement in the lives of your teammates, and it demonstrates just how powerful this new reality is. For example, Haru Okumura's father is back due to her cognition, most desiring for him to be there, and to be a good father to her. Makoto can see her father again, and her and Sae actually get along well. And Morgana turns into this K-pop looking Chad that is absolutely ready to take on to your room, and probably not even wash the sheets after. And then, to top it all off, there is the man, the myth, the legend, Light Yagami. You gotta love how this dude is literally Dio posing in the artworks. You were expecting a redemption arc, but it was I, Akechi. And he's just as evil and murderous as ever. And I love it. Though I have to say, if you were only lukewarm on his character before with this new story arc, you might just love him. Instead of trying to make him feel big sad guilt for being a bad boy, they actually just make him more sadistic than he ever was before, while also being willing to cooperate with you. He's still acting in, his, no pun intended, real persona, rather than doing some kind of 180, but also still attempting to atone in his own way. Initially, only Joker and Akechi are able to maintain their memories of their real lives, as the rest of your teammates are under Maruki's spell. Akechi pretty much has Joker gripped by the jewels here. This leads them to partnering up and investigating the mystery of Maruki's palace, with the others slowly regaining their memories with you reminding them of past events. And then there's the new girl who's been calling you senpai this whole time, Kasumi Yoshizawa, allegedly. You see, Kasumi also gets the drop that something is up, until, you know, you realize that she is the something that is up. It turns out Kasumi's identity was a lie this entire time. Kasumi is actually her dead sister, who this girl has been pretending to be this whole time. The name of the girl that you've been talking to is Sumire Yoshizawa, but I suppose she wouldn't be the first person to take the words living legacy a little too far. And thanks to Dr. Maruki's studies in cognitive science, I'm sorry, one more time, cognitive science has allowed everyone to see her as her older sister even down to the name. This is the life that she wanted, to live on for Kasumi 
as Kasumi, and she is absolutely ready and willing to kill you in order to keep it. Of course, after some gentle shonen style persuasion, which mostly amounts to smacking the crap out of them until they agree with the protagonist again, she comes back on our side. But here's where things start to get sort of complicated. It's not just Sumire. To some degree, everyone around you is genuinely happy and living their best lives. Everyone's obtained their heart's deepest desire, at least on the surface, and that's where the conflict falls into morally gray territory. Maruki genuinely wants what's best for you. He actually doesn't want to fight you. All he's trying to do is give you your wildest dreams and beyond. In fact, he makes multiple pleas with you, begging you to reconsider, to accept your happy ending. After all, it is the happy ending that you, yourself, desired. All made manifest. I think the natural response that everyone has is, of course I wouldn't want a fake reality. And I think perhaps that is the intellectually correct response to have. Conversely, I think there's a lot of us in life situations where something like this would honestly be a salvation of sorts. Maybe even make life worth living. And if you could have your memories sort of locked away like our heroes did, and never have to directly face it, you'd truly be able to escape from all your problems. Forever. And not have to look back, while also having reality the way you want it. Even if it's not real, it does sound nice. But then I realized why I wouldn't accept this reality, not just for myself, but also for our Phantom Thieves as well. Self-actualization is defined as, quote, the realization or fulfillment of one's talents and potentialities, especially considered as a drive or need present in everyone. The implication of that is, is that in order to self-actualize, you need to grow. To achieve your actualized state without going through the necessary character growth and development to get there is to essentially cheat yourself of any development you could have. That is to say that giving our Phantom Thieves a fake and forced happy ending would undermine all the growth they went through in the story. Something I try to tell people when they want an ultra happy ending for a reboot of a certain other series. And while we may not have an actualized reality in real life, in some ways we actually do. It's just that in real life we call it escapism, and there are healthy ways and healthy amounts to approach it with, and then there are unhealthy and bad ways to approach it. For some people, this may manifest with the use of certain or uh, making less videos in a month because you uh, wanted to spend 120 hours playing Persona 5 Royal, or even projecting your desires of escaping this current reality onto certain people and using them as your source of escapism and maybe even liberation. In that light, I think the best way to look at this conflict and Maruki himself is to see him as that of an overprotective parent. And they actually communicate this in multiple ways, from Maruki not actually wanting to fight in the first place, to him literally fulfilling everything that their hearts desire, and pleading for them to reconsider. But it was about more than just making the characters feel all tingly in their tummy. For Akechi, it meant a second chance at life. Literally. For Joker, it meant an easy way to fix his criminal record. Essentially, it wouldn't just make their lives happier, it would actually save their lives, and to do so in a way that only an overprotective parent really would. Like all the music for Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal, the boss theme absolutely slaps. Laps. This theme, titled Throw Away Your Mask, which is ironic in 2020. In fact, I think some people might have taken that too literally. Look, I'm no music guy. If you want a great music guy, go check out my friend Alex Mokala, as he does incredible music analysis of songs from Persona and other JRPGs. But that being said, what this song does here is kind of genius, at least from my perspective. Here, just listen to this part. You can throw your mask away. The singer is actually softening their tone, and again it sounds like a concerned but overly protective parent. The lyrics aren't just being told from Maruki's perspective, but also being sung in the tone that he's pleading with you in. Now that is actually meta. Although even after losing the fight, Maruki just does not give up. In his final moments, he manages to acquire the stand arrow, which allows him to evolve his persona into Golden Experience Requiem. Though after a brief but scripted exchange of Oda's and Mudaz, poor dorky Maruki gets his behind handed to him, opting to 1v1 Joker, which is kind of hilarious considering this guy. <laughs> 
After clapping Maruki like a standing ovation, he finally learns his place, with reality at long last reverting back to normal. Sumire Yoshizawa embracing her new life as not Kasumi, Joker and everyone else parting their ways, and Akechi apparently re-dying, but they also tease, hey, maybe Akechi didn't re-die? Please just let this man take a potato chip and eat it, and this excellent but extra story arc to Persona comes to a close. Now, that being said, it definitely does have some issues. First of all, as a climax to this game's world, you really can't top the final arc of Persona 5. I mean, you fight God, literally. So what villain can really rival that? Where I personally enjoy morally gray territory more, I think placing this new arc after something so bombastic can unintentionally sell the arc short. But working this new arc and having all the meaning that they wanted to have in there, without cutting any elements, was next to impossible. Secondly, let me try to take a deep breath before I say this, Morgana turned into a helicopter. Why? How? Hey Siri, what's a deus ex machina? Deus ex machina is a plot device whereby a seemingly unsolvable problem in a story is suddenly and abruptly resolved by an unexpected and unlikely occurrence. Would you like to hear more? No. I think we're good. They also added more layers to Mementos, except this time you're kinda going, like, up and over. I don't know. It's like a pocket inside of Mementos. It's not a bad or good thing, it just honestly depends on how much you personally like Mementos. In the end, I felt this new story arc was something that truly touched me when reflecting on my own journey. When I started the channel, I was both working a job and creating YouTube videos. It was really rough but I was tired of working a job that I hated day in and day out just to be able to survive. If I were coddled the whole time, I would have never had to strive for greatness and do something better with my life. And through all that adversity, it made me a better content creator and a better human being. Our Phantom Thieves are a lot the same. Had everything been given to them without their struggle, it would almost invalidate the entire game and all the deep meaning within it. They're the heroes they are because of the struggles they face, and it would rob them of the ability to grow and become Become even better people. And to me, that's the theme here. To self-actualize without the adversities required to actualize. It's to have what you want and to rob yourself of the growth required to get there. And it's to undermine all the growth that you went through so far. A message that I think is profound in the day and age of instant gratification. And if you value the content on this channel, consider becoming a patron for the Night Sky Prince, where I'm supported by incredible people like Matthew Sai, who help make all of these videos possible. So if that means a lot to you, consider becoming a patron with the link in the description below. Shout out to Matthew and the rest of the Ultima community.